So thank you so much for joining me. This is Jackie. And for those of you who don't know me, if you're watching a replay, please do hashtag replay in the comments. If you want a copy of the recipe, um, please just comment recipe, please. And I will arrange for you to get a copy of it when I finally get around to writing it. It doesn't take me that long. Those of you who've been following this series knows would, would know that I, I do get back to you eventually. All right. Um, but yeah, again, thanks again for joining me. My name is Jackie M and I am a former restaurant owner, born and raised in Malaysia, based here in Sydney, Australia. And I nowadays do a lot of stuff online. And one of them is this series of lockdown themed cook-alongs. So if, especially if it's the first time watching this, please let me know in the comments so we can give you a proper welcome. Um, Maggie, Amy, Jeff, how you doing? <laughs> um, say hello, let me know where, where you're watching from. Like I said, we're going to do something a little bit different this time around. Um, please share this out and I'm going to pick um, a winner from someone who shared this broadcast out to their friends and family or in other groups and all that. All right, so I really appreciate this in advance and what we're going to make. By the way, for those of you who are just watching this for the first time, um, you know, I haven't even shared this out. Let me just go and do this now. Those of you who have um, not followed this series, the point of the lockdown cook alongs, especially if you're a little bit of a um, you know uh, advanced chef, the point of these lockdown cook alongs is that I basically have to pick recipes that are fairly easy to achieve, regardless of your skill level, and also recipes where the ingredients are pretty easy to come by in keeping with the whole theme of lockdown because I wouldn't imagine you'd be traveling out somewhere <laughs> to find all these fancy exotic ingredients and see there how you doing Marvin how you doing and yeah like I say everyone say hello and share this out because someone who shares out um, enthusiastically is going to get a uh, something sent out to to you at some point during the week Okay, but yeah, just give me a second while I, I share it out. Okay, so share this in a group and I want to share this to my own group, Jackie M's Malaysian Street Food and live now and post it. And by the way, if you're cooking along, uh, if you didn't see my latest update and you're using vermicelli, can I get you to go ahead and put the kettle on, please? Because we want to actually soak this in hot water, okay? Ideally, boiled water from the kettle. If not, just hot water from the tap is okay. But also, you want um, something for it to go into, okay? So let's do that now while I share this out, just so we can... And if you think I'm going too fast, right? Uh, tell me to slow down, okay? Because I'm always uh, a little bit um, manic, okay? share in a group so Malaysian Street Food Academy post and I'll share it to my other page share to a page of my truly Malaysian clearly I've got too many pages and all that happening if my audio starts to crap out can I get you to actually send me a private message because private messages I, I hear a little ding that tell me that um, I've got a private message come through. All right, I don't really, I can't really pay attention to the comments per se because it's a little bit involved. Um, but yeah, thanks again, guys, for joining me. Um, and we are making, we are making noodles, and we're going to make them uh, a couple of different iterations of crispy noodles. Okay, so if you're familiar with um, restaurant style crispy noodles you know there are a number of different versions we're going to essentially do two versions today and one of them is using vermicelli vermicelli i think most people would be familiar with this i've got a couple of different brands here this one was courtesy of chang's okay vermicelli rice noodles okay and they come in cakes like this okay in fact i might use this whereas these ones from chinese uh, grocery stores these are the more i guess more uh, familiar to Asians like me, but they come in longer strips. So I think these cakes might be actually more practical to you. So let's use the Chang's Cakey Vermicelli. Um, now, the way we're going to do this is, okay, the other type of noodles we're going to have a go at, um, I want to show you uh, what we call wonton noodles, right? This is what it looks like. And I keep trying to say, because a lot of people are actually contacting me privately just to verify they've got the right type of noodles 
So if you're using these type of noodles, don't soak them, okay? Because that would be a bad thing. <laughs> but wonton noodles, how are they different, okay? So you notice here it says, on the label, it says fresh egg noodles, right? But fresh egg noodles mean lots of different things. I mean, Hokkien noodles are fresh egg noodles, right? Uh, and of these uh, thin fresh egg noodles, there are a couple of different varieties. And in fact, even restaurants in Sydney, I find, use the wrong type of fresh egg noodles for the wrong type of dishes. I'm not going to name and shame them, but um, the fact of the matter is, these ones here, the way they're different visually is that they look a little bit flowery, if you can see it, okay? So they're different to the Hainan, the Mi Hai Lam, the Hainanese noodles that we would have used um, two cook-alongs ago. Those ones are more akin to Hokkien noodles, which are actually dense and also oil-covered, okay? This is flowery, okay? And with these noodles, there are three different, uh, two, well, let's say broadly two different ways to use them. If you just boil them um, and dish them out, they'll be very soft and silky. And that's why we call them wonton noodles, because the soft and silky variety is what we use in wontons, okay? Now, um, if, however, we don't boil them, we can fry them and they turn into crispy noodles, okay? And I'll show you in a bit. Now, crispy, uh, Chinese crispy noodles, Vietnamese restaurants will use this type of noodles to make crispy noodles with. If you go to a Hong Kong, like, Cantonese restaurant, they actually have a different type, but we're not doing that today, okay? But let's get started. So, assuming you've got your hot water or your boiling water ready, we are using the Michelli, okay? Let's put them here. And these, if you fry them straight, they turn into, you know, I don't know if you're, where's my water? If you fry these straight, they puff up like uh, like rice like rice puffs, except noodly. All right, but we're not frying them straight. We're actually uh, softening them with, with water first, okay? Now, I just noticed, and that's the other thing you're going to find as well, different types of like the same variety of noodles from different brands, right, will be a little bit different. This looks um, thinner than the ones that I use from the other pack, if you know what I mean. Let me just, I need tongs. Don't have tongs, should I grab tongs, okay. But let's let this soak for a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to strain it out, okay? So if you don't have a strainer or a colander, have that ready. But let's soak this and we're going to heat up, um, we're going to, okay, I don't know what proteins you're using. This is what are we using. So let me show you. Mm. Okay, so the other ingredients we want, oyster sauce. I hope you guys all have oyster sauce. If you don't have oyster sauce, you know those uh, soybean, like the, 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 the preserved soybeans will work as well, okay? But I said oyster sauce, so we're getting the oyster sauce. We want some garlic, all right? These are my peeled garlic. Um, we want some greens, okay? I'm using choy some, right? They look a little bit manky because I bought them last week. And I'm gonna throw in some prawns. Again, like I said, we're, keep, we're keeping like the whole lockdown theme thing. So I, I just basically went into my fridge and had a little bit of a scrounge around for leftover bits of protein. I found some chicken, this is cooked chicken, okay? So we're gonna use this too. And in my freezer, I've got some fish balls and I've got some frozen scallops, which I defrosted, okay? So these fish balls, we're gonna slice up into slices. And so that's a lot of protein, right? Um, but I, I like a lot of like trimmings in my food. I don't like, like when you go to those Chinese restaurants where they charge you 10 bucks for a big giant plate of noodles with only one prawn and one fish cake sort of stuff. I, I, I want it the other way around, you know? So I tend to go overboard for what. As far as the sauce is concerned, we're actually doing two different variations of the same dish, okay? So if you've got eggs and you're not egg averse, you might want to consider adding eggs to yours. So that's one version we're going to do and the other version will be egg free. Okay, we want some um, starch and I've got some tapioca starch. You can use corn starch. So let's see what we'll do. We'll start, um, let's put some oil in here. You don't need a whole lot of oil. I know some of you are a little bit like reticent about doing any kind of like serious frying, okay? But um, you'll be fine. But I did mention, because uh, someone posted a video of someone doing some deep frying and they were fry and they were doing some deep frying in this okay don't do that guys okay you want something that's got some depth in it if you want to do any <laughs> kind of frying because i get really worried when people try and fry stuff with a lot of oil in a thin um shallow 
frying pan okay so this one is what about four inches deep okay we're only going to add about an inch of oil to this okay so let's do this oh pause it girl maggie <laughs> okay so we've got some oil here this looks suspiciously yellow i've got a feeling uh, no maybe it's okay i don't know it might actually have been that oil that i used to fry the turmeric chicken from ayam masa mera last week not sure but let's see how we go okay so we got some oil ready oh it's really only about half an inch of oil really okay so the noodles if you are using the vermicelli and they're soaking in hot water they will soften okay here you go you're not looking to cook it all the way you could if you want um but you just really want to soften it okay so let's strain it out now okay so this is strained out i'm gonna let it sit for a bit cutting board here okay protein chicken okay so like i said lockdown cooking this is not fancy i i, I posted some photos like with like freshwater prawns and with like uh frog and someone asked asking were well, they frog legs no they're they're full-on frogs. We don't just eat the legs. We, we, we Asians, <laughs> we eat all parts of the animal, all right? Um, but those are like kind of like premium trimmings, obviously. But again, lockdown, we're using like leftover food. So this is chicken, diced chicken. And we're going to actually just toss a little bit of pepper. And if you want some salt, okay? And of course, I generally would famously add chicken powder in lieu of salt okay but you can use just salt okay so a little bit of that and put a little bit of the tapioca starch cornstarch in it okay just toss it through because what we're going to do we're actually going to first fry up the noodles and then we're going to actually throw these into the oil and just briefly fry them up as well all right and again, if my audio goes, oh wow, Facebook is transcribing my speech <laughs> and getting half my words wrong. Okay, so we've got um, these fish balls. We're gonna slice them up. Okay, okay, so. Don't forget, share this out guys, uh, so that more people can get a hold of this content and I'm going to go through who, who did the sharing and I'm gonna pick a winner all right and of course I'd love to see your food photos as well um, look this is I'm just gonna throw this here I'm not fussy I've got some prawns these are cooked prawns typically you won't use cooked prawns you, you use raw prawns okay and I just have to use these up because they're getting like <laughs> a little bit dead <laughs> all right so let's throw in a couple of cooked prawns so everything in here is actually cooked stuff but of course ideally you want raw really okay and if you're using like raw chicken or whatever cut them into thin strips um thin slices okay you can use red meat if you want okay but do the same regardless of what you're using you want to toss a little bit of pepper through them uh, some cornstarch and some salt or chicken powder in my case okay got that and i've got these uh scallops as well so again a little bit of flour oh that's a lot of water in here okay it doesn't matter a little flour chicken powder okay again look if you're averse to msg and whatever just ignore that just put like salt in it okay don't judge me so pepper and Let's throw this in here, why not? And let's turn this on and turn on the stove. Okay. And we've got the greens. Now, if you're doing large amounts of this, I would suggest, you know, if you were cooking this for like a big party or something like that, you'll want to separately have like a pot of water to boil the greens in, okay? Because too much greens in your sauce simmering away can contaminate the flavor of the sauce and turn it like all kind of like tasting a little bit you know 
if you know what I mean. But these look really bad. Okay. Okay. So there's some green here. And like I said, these are choy some you could use baby bok choy, you can use whatever you want really. Um, but yeah, if you're doing large amounts of this, just blanch them in like a separate pot of boiling water, but only blanch them for seconds, okay? And you might even just want to parboil them sort of thing, so they don't need to be cooked all the way through. It's just uh, sometimes, especially if you're doing like large amounts of stuff like that. Okay, let's turn this on. You run the risk of actually, um, you know, ruining the flavor of the sauce because there's too much happening in there. All right, garlic, forgot about it. Okay, so you want some garlic. Bring this back over here. Ray, how you doing from San Francisco? <laughs> Let's have a look. Who else have a nice little hello to? How's San Francisco? I've never been there. All right, so here we go. Garlic, all right. Ideally fresh garlic. Okay. And you just want to mince it up. And if you've got some stock, right, um, you don't want it seasoned. Okay, I actually, it's quite funny. I, 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 I was invited to do a cooking series in Singapore for this online TV portal and I did and they got all the ingredients for me but like the ingredients were all sponsored and that's the danger of actually collaborating not coll I mean that's the danger of working with people you don't know because they got a Singaporean supermarket chain to sponsor the event and they supplied all these they supplied all these uh, stock in cans but the stock were actually salty and I'm not used to using like, but every time you hear me talk about stock guys, I mean stock as in stock that's just like bone stock that's had no seasoning added to it, all right? But, um, so I used that stock and it was salty and I was adding much salt and chicken powder to it. And at the end of that, uh, that episode, I had to like, kind of like, you know, for the entire series, I had to actually kind of like, the closing shot was me eating the food sort of thing and I just about died because it was so incredibly salty and I had to pretend that it was really nice. Okay, so this is the uh, vermicelli, okay. Like I said, you want to strain it out. Just a little bit of water here left. Just make sure, best you can, strain it out. If you were to fry this on its own, like I said, it will turn into... Oh, maybe I'll just do a little bit of an example from this batch here. If you were to fry this without soaking it, it will be different to this here, okay? You fry it without soaking it, this is akin to those, you know, if you go to those suburban Chinese restaurants, you know, that have, I don't know, um, sweet and sour pork or whatever, sitting on a bed of these fluffy, crispy things, that's what these are, okay? That's vermicelli, unsoaked, deep fried. Um, but for this, we're actually, more commonly, if you're eating vermicelli, crispy vermicelli, you would actually soak it and then fry it into cakes, okay? So that's the more common way we would serve crispy vermicelli. But this, if you're frying wonton noodles, especially, like I said, in Vietnamese Chinese restaurants here in Australia, this is what they would use, okay? Floury egg noodles, okay? So we've got that ready, we've got that going. So all your protein is like tossed in a bit of salt and pepper and cornstarch or tapioca starch which is what I use right Should I put, let me just put a little bit more here okay and if you want you can actually like throw in an egg white some recipes will call for like a bit of egg white to help kind of like make it a little bit more silky all right we're not going to bother because we're only doing such small amounts here uh, but yeah, message me if my audio goes wonky because my last three broadcasts I've had audio problems 
at various stages some of them like last week's i don't know if anyone noticed for those of you who know me in real life and watch my other videos or whatever last week's broadcast had me sounding like i, I, I like I was like a couple of octaves deeper than my usual voice and nobody said anything until after the broadcast, you know. In fact, one of you told me I sounded fine. <laughs> you liar. <laughs> okay. So, uh, stop. Okay, this is my stop. Okay, this is actually concentrate. Chicken concentrate. Okay, I know it doesn't look the best, but it's fresh. What it is, is actually from my food business, uh, which is in hiatus at the moment because of the lockdown. But what I do um, is I sous vide cook these chicken breast pieces, which is what these are actually are, um, in bags. And in the slow cooking process, chicken juice is produced, and this is what it is. So this is actually intense, like very, very strong flavored chicken stock concentrate essentially is what it is but it's unseasoned all right um but okay let's let me just uh hey michelle how you doing from central queensland lynn how you doing <laughs> shot one how are you rachel yay good to see you annette hi kathy hey mala hey good to see you um but yeah guys like i said this time we're doing a little bit different I'm, uh, we're going to pick one winner i mean I'll have some giveaways, some 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 you know, for for those who participate. Three 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 people participate. Two of them by posting photos, and one of you, especially for those of you who are not in a position to be able to cook along, um, I'm offering you the option, the opportunity to be nominated for a prize, a small prize, um, by sharing this out. Okay, because I want to reach a larger audience. Okay, so as like I said, this oil looks suspiciously yellow, so you're gonna have to cut me a little bit of slack because I think I grabbed the oil that was used to fry the chicken from last week's uh, recipe. Okay, so this is heating up. What we wanna do, let me show you first, okay. So you wanna get this to about 180 degrees. I, I don't measure anything, okay? We Asians, uh, we fry stuff by just testing it in the oil and it's not really that. Um, when it like froths up and, 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 and pops up you know it's ready okay but it's not and like I said like um, I know by having run a food business because I used to sell these curry puffs spiral curry puffs are deep fried and a lot of my customers like them so much they want to actually buy them uncooked and do it themselves at home but they always insist on throwing it in the oven because they freak out the mention of, of deep frying freaks out a lot of australians i noticed i'm told though my dutch friends tell me that every dutch household actually owns a deep fryer that's that really impresses me because apparently the dutch are actually big fans of uh, chicken schnitzel or Vienna schnitzel, whatever, some sort of schnitzel. So apparently they all have a deep fryer at home. So that's not a problem with the Dutch, but with Aussies, if you don't have a deep fryer, I don't have one either, okay? It's not a big deal. We do our frying in woks or in like deep pans like this, as is the case here. Okay, so we're gonna wait for this to heat up. Um, like I said, um, I, got, I got method, <laughs> yeah. Oyster sauce, okay. We also got some soya sauce. I don't know if I have that on the uh, ingredients list, but everyone should have uh, soya sauce at home, all right? Now, uh, I have to admit in all honesty, I, you know, since coming to Australia, like growing up in my part of Malaysia, which is down south, we never came across fish sauce, right? Well, I never came across fish sauce in our cooking and all that. The people up north uh, did, like Penangites use fish sauce. We use a lot of soya sauce. Um, so for the heck of it, we're going to use soya sauce today. But since coming to Australia and living among the Vietnamese, because I came to Australia around the same time, uh, there was an influx of refugees from Indochina and I grew up, well not grew up, I was already a grown up. <laughs> I, I lived in that part of Sydney when I first came to Australia. So I, I like a lot of Vietnamese ingredients and one of them that I've really taken to is uh, fish sauce, okay? So you'll find in a lot of my recipes that I actually skip using soya sauce nowadays in favor of fish sauce, but like I said, just to um, be a little bit faithful to the original today, we're going to use soya sauce, all right? And oyster sauce, okay? This is what we're using. And for whatever reason, 
The last time I used it, I found this quite sweet. And I've mentioned this in my part, previous broadcast that different brands of oyster sauce and different iterations, some of them are more premium in that they will have more oysters in them, right? Um, some of them are sweet, okay? So if they're sweet, don't add any sugar to your sauce that you're making. I'm not going to add any to mine. If you think yours might be quite sharp and savory, add a pinch of sugar. You don't want it to be outright sweet, okay? So that's the oyster sauce. Um, here you go. I use fish sauce to being a tier two. Oh, is that right? I know very little about tier two cooking. Okay, let's see how this is going. Let's throw another little bit here. Okay, it's a little bit more happening. Okay, I know you can see it. Okay, there you go. I need tongs, let me go and grab it. Okay, it still needs a little bit of time. But if you know what I mean, okay, since we're not, I'm just frying up the vermicelli, dry vermicelli, just to show you how it looks, okay? Okay, if, like I said, I'm talking to the Aussies here. If you go to, <laughs> if you eat at suburban Asian restaurants, right, even, even Chinese restaurants, I guess, in Chinatown. This is the stuff that they put, like, to kind of like add bulk and like, you know, for display purposes to some of your Chinese dishes, even like Peking duck, sometimes they put it on a bit of this fried vermicelli. All right, so this fried vermicelli, you see how it crisps up, okay? It's what it's for. But I don't know if you, uh, your experience is the same, but it's very rare that you would actually fry it this way for what we're making today, okay? Um, more typically, like I said, you would actually soak the vermicelli first and then fry it up in batches, okay? So we're going to do that, right? Bit scary, okay? Don't agitate it too much, okay? Just let it fry it and we want to brown it, okay? Now I want to show you the egg noodles, the fresh egg noodles that are drenched in flour. You want enough oil that you don't have to actually kind of have to turn it around, right? And of course, you typically wouldn't fry all of this at once, okay? I'm just wanting to kind of like quickly show you guys. Now, when you fry anything, like when you're frying these egg noodles, when do you know when to when to take it out, you know when the oil starts, when the bubbling starts to dissipate, okay? Like I say, and that's part of the reason why you want like some level of depth in whatever it is you're using for your deep frying, because otherwise the oil's going to bubble up and it just gets really super dangerous in your kitchen, okay? But as long as you've got enough depth in your pan, you're going to be totally fine, okay? So the idea is you want to fry this till it's crispy and you don't want to leave it in there too long because it will continue to crisp up. It's not going to feel completely crisp while, when you take it out, but when it cools down, it will crisp up, okay? So these vermicelli, you're going to fry it for longer because you want to actually brown them a little bit, scorch them a little bit, okay? Because this one is good to come out. Let me just get some paper towel so if you're using um, if you're using red meat like what I just did with the whole marinating thing usually red meat takes a little bit more time for the flavors to soak through okay so you may want to consider 
marinating them longer. But if you're just using seafood like I am here, just yeah, for you know the amount of time it takes you to do the noodles will be fine, okay? So you see these lumps here, okay? And we're gonna cook more egg noodles. Kind of like croquot with no flavor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Marla was talking about, yeah, the vermicelli tastes like croquot, which is uh, prawn crackers, but without the prawn flavor, basically. And the Thais actually like would fry this up and then toss it in like a sweet kind of like, you know, one of those Thai dishes, I mean. Um, so they kind of like coat it in this fairly treacly sauce. And it's quite interesting, but yeah, we wouldn't usually do it like for what we're making today, okay? Okay, just try this out some more. And like I say, if you want a copy of the recipe, please comment recipe, please. If you're watching this anywhere else, guys, um, I would appreciate it if you comment recipe, please, underneath the, this is tricky, underneath the original video, okay? Because if it's shared out like, several layers maybe it's shared to a private group or something like that that i don't have access to if you comment recipe please i won't be able to see it so it's better if you click through wherever you're watching click through to the original video where it's streaming and comment in the comments there or even better comment in the events that this thing would be in it just reminds me maybe it's not even showing up in there facebook is really weird um, in terms of helping people find my live videos, like it doesn't always kind of make sense. The, but let me just quickly check if it's actually showing up in the event. Audra, hey, I missed the beginning. What did you do to the egg noodles? Nothing. Did you just so? No, no. I just fried it dry. And do a recipe, please. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> Okay, I, I wish I had a little bit more oil for the egg noodles because like I said, I don't like having to flip it, okay? It's typically you will fry, fry it in a wok, so this wouldn't be a problem because that's why we do a lot of our deep frying in woks, guys. So um, even a flat bottom wok, because the sides go up, you can put like, you know, you don't need quite a lot of oil for it to actually give it some depth, which is what you need a lot of time when you're doing deep frying, all right? But insofar as these um, vermicelli noodles, you don't actually need quite this much oil. I, I basically put more oil in because I knew I was frying these egg noodles as well. But these, like for those of you who are really like uh, leery about frying, about deep frying, right? Because these noodles are actually already cooked from the hot water, you can actually pan fry it with half the amount of oil to what I'm using now. I think you're saying, yeah, now you tell us. <laughs> Sorry guys, I just thought of it just then. Okay, but let's just fry this. You see, for as long as it's bubbling, it means it's still trying to pull out the um, moisture out of the noodles. So you wait for the bubbling to dissipate, but not completely die out, okay? If you wait until there's absolutely no more bubbling, then your noodles are gonna be like, crusty okay you don't want it crusty okay let's take this out okay and i'm going to actually fry one more lot of the vermicelli because those two cakes don't look quite like <laughs> enough <laughs> for me to do what i want to show you guys noodles this is you know funnily enough it hasn't really puffed up the way it sometimes does but typically the puffier noodles are what you get at 
Vietnamese restaurants in Australia when you ask for crispy noodles, you know, as opposed to in uh, Chinese restaurants in Chinatown. I hope somebody actually knows what I'm talking about because I pay attention to these things. <laughs> okay. Like this. Okay, so with the vermicelli, you want to turn them into cakes, all right? Because the cakes are gonna break up when they're when they're soaked in the sauce. But the cakes are not are meant to be pseudo soft. They're not meant to be like totally hundred percent crispy like these ones here. Okay. Hey Sammy, how are you? Long time. Hey Eric, right after my stream. But since when did you start streaming? Alright, so let's keep that going. So we've got, remember, we've got the greens here. Got the greens. Got the garlic. Right. Got the protein. And then more protein here. Speaking of protein. Let's throw in the scallops. You can actually skip this step with the proteins, it's just... You can actually just simmer the protein in the sauce, but that means that they'll just be like boiled protein as opposed to fried protein. But either way works, it's really up to you, okay? What do you do with I missed the question from Andrew. What do you do with the used oil? I know I can't pour it down the drain. <laughs> you use it again. <laughs> hey, come on. <laughs> you use it again until it's really bad. <laughs> uh, when it's no longer good enough to use again. I pour I pour it into bottles and I throw out the bottles. Okay, see the, uh, the oil is not quite hot enough because I threw in so much crap, alright? So you, ideally you want the oil at about 180 degrees, 200 degrees Celsius, okay? But right now it's almost like, just kind of like, a bit limp. <laughs> What's everyone doing this weekend anyway? Oil fried scallops, squids. Geraldine, how are you? Say hello everyone, let me know where you're watching from. I know where Eric's watching from. I know where Sammy's watching from. I know where Andrew's watching from. And Michelle, I know where Michelle is watching Raw chicken, do I fry? Yes, yes, if you can. Ideally, I mean, I mean you can just boil it in the sauce later on, but I think frying what you want to do is actually toss the chicken with some pepper and salt and cornstarch, right? And then just flash fry it, but you want the oil hotter than what it is here because you want to just kind of like just scorch it a bit, you know? And you're going to find if you use scallops like I do, scallops take a little bit longer to cook because they're thick, all right? But you want to make sure you don't overcook it. So you're cooking Chinese food. We are very, very particular about like not overcooking our everything really. Um, but seafood in particular, okay? So these are the egg noodles, right? And these are the vermicelli cakes. And like I said, the vermicelli cakes are meant to be chewy, okay? They're not meant to be like light and crisp, uh, crispy. They're crusty, like who was saying it. 
uh, like what Samuel was saying, hey Lena, how are you doing? Sri Zulad, hey, how are you doing? From California, hey, how are you? How are you guys holding up over in America, by the way? Okay, let's take out the protein. hear about the meat shortages over in America. Are you guys getting like hit with that or is it only in certain parts of the country? Okay, so again the protein, just to uh, for those who joined us late, I've got some bits of cooked chicken in there because remember uh, lockdown cooking, we're using leftovers. I've got some fish bowls, which I always have on standby in my freezer. Um, I have some prawns that I wanted to use up. I didn't throw them in because they don't really need it. Um, and we are cooking two different types of noodles and we're going to make two different types of sauce. They're virtually identical, but one's with egg and one's without, all right? So what you want to do, let me just get a plate. out. Straighten it a bit. Move this out of the way. And we're going to make the sauce now, all right? Heat up the pan. So we've got these and whatever protein you're using. Let's heat up some oil in here. You just want a little bit. And just heat up the oil and then we're going to add the garlic. And this is like the easiest part here, okay? Asian shops sell thick fried noodles. Oh yeah, yeah, no, no, they're, they're called yimin. They're yimin. But those noodles, you want to actually you can use the same recipe, but those noodles, you actually, um, they're not going to be served crispy because they're too chewy and too big. Um, you want to actually soak them in the sauce. They'll soak up all the sauce and they'll be soft and kind of like, uh, they're really nice. I like them. Noah loves them. <laughs> all right, so we've got the garlic. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to switch this over here so it's easy for you guys to see what's going on. And I think some of you might have used yimin in the Mi Hai Lam to cook alongs ago, actually. So there are all these little like ways to parse all these different types of noodles. They are not the same, they're different. Um, none of them is going to like taste bad per se, but just for the sake of being consistent with what we are actually trying to achieve, I just have to tell you what noodles you're meant to get, okay? But obviously, like I said, if that's not doable, hey, look use spaghetti if you want to you know what i mean like i said it's not going to taste bad per se um so we're just kind of trying to sizzle this a little bit the pan these pans take a while to come up to temp um no one loves them they're gonna be good oh yeah <laughs> mr fuss pot I'm really stunned that uh, Facebook is actually transcribing my speech. It's like, I better speak more clearly. Um, because of my speech, my accent, and also the kind of stuff I talk about, which I think like are not within the, <laughs> the, the vocab range of Facebook and YouTube's AI, they always mistranslate me. All right. so. Garlic, you can look, there's no particular set order for this to go in apart from the garlic and oil. You do want the garlic and oil in first, okay? Um, oyster sauce, you do want to actually um, sizzle the garlic until it's aromatic and slightly browned, okay? Don't burn it though. 
some of my chicken stock, my concentrate, chicken stock concentrate, some water. And if you didn't pre-fry your protein, you can throw them in here. You want, uh, yeah, put a little bit of chicken powder if you want. Um, okay. But generally, look, oyster sauce on its own is fine. If you don't have oyster sauce, but you do have chicken powder, that too will be okay. All right. Um, so back in my restaurant days, um, we used to sell kui tiao si ram wat dan ho. Um, and you know sometimes we put oyster sauce in it but sometimes we didn't okay so some recipes call for it some don't okay and depending on my mood <laughs> i might leave it out altogether okay and if you want a darker sauce you can put some of that thick cooking caramel that i talked about in two broadcasts ago all right and by the way guys um if you know idea what i'm talking about you're missing my broadcast or you want to make sure you don't miss all my future live videos that's the link there jackie m street food kitchen is my new facebook group i just started up last week um you want to type in bit.ly slash msfa malaysian street uh yeah don't worry what is that so that's uh, that's actually my that's actually paul's fault bit.ly slash msfa hyphen group it's case sensitive all right so msfa has to be capitalized and group has to be lowercase that will take you to my free facebook group my malaysian street food kitchen and just ask to join and that's where i put all my live cooking videos and there's other content there as well all around malaysian singaporean street food all right literally just started it a week ago so join that if you want a structured coaching program with me that's only like a small subscription fee in a separate facebook group which is my malaysian street food academy and for that you get a i'm talking too much yeah okay let's throw in the greens okay for that you get a uh nine module malaysian street food malaysian cooking essentials course you get a an entire library of asian ingredients where i go on camera and talk about these ingredients where do you find it what do you use it for um what happens if you don't have it you know all those sort of questions that you may have been struggling with when it comes to asian cooking all right so we've got those and what we're going to do uh put a dash of soya sauce if you want okay and we're gonna thicken it up all right so you want your starch cornstarch or tapioca starch so the structured coaching program is via my malaysian street food academy the free uh, group is my malaysian street food kitchen okay um so the structured coaching once a month i also hop on camera and do a full-on masterclass with you okay something that's more substantial than just okay this is how you make this okay but it's excellent value because we are only literally just starting out okay it's worth three times what it costs at the moment and we've actually got a mother's day special right now that's only going to last until this weekend okay so i mixed some of that tapioca starch and i think i need more with a little bit of cold water don't use hot water because it will turn into starch before you can um, mix it through properly so we've got a mother's day special but you pay for you get an extra month for free in that program so if you've got a mother or if you want to buy yourself a present for this mother's day even if you're not a mom go for your life i would love to have you it's only a small group at the moment of 30 odd people so you get like my undivided attention okay you get access to me directly okay see how it thickens up quickly right let's taste it it needs a little bit more so you can throw in some salt if you want you throw in some pepper salt pepper whatever and like i say i really noticed the sweetness i did not put any sugar in here but i can tell that i can tell this is a little bit sweet okay um but if your um, oyster sauce is quite savory then and you feel inclined to put a pinch of uh, sugar in it do it okay so that's all it is okay so this is one batch of your 
sauce, pour it over. And the sauce is going to soak through the noodles and start to soften it, okay? And that's it. It's not the best presented, but trust me, it works, okay? So let's do the second batch. Again, let's get a plate for these noodles. Okay. And you can throw the protein in the sauce if you want. Okay, let's throw, if we've got a bit of oil, let's throw in the garlic. Just crank it up a bit. Sizzle the garlic. If you've got Chinese wine and you feel like a splash of wine, do it too, okay? So it is pretty resilient, pretty flexible. Jackie's new group. Yay, thanks John. <laughs> Don't forget to share this out around, guys, because whoever shares this out the most is going to get... Uh, I'm going to get in touch with you and send you out something. I'll ask for your address and I'll send you out something small from my little collection of uh, <laughs> stuff in my kitchen. So again, you want to actually just scorch this a bit, don't burn it, right? Yeah. Okay, we're going to change the order a little bit and put in the chicken stock. If you don't have chicken stock, just water is fine, guys. Okay. You only use it if you happen to have some chicken stock sitting around that you want to use up, like as in my case, okay? Oyster sauce. Here. Oh, you tried it already. It turned out. <laughs> Phew. <laughs> All right. Uh, again, a bit of salt, a bit of chicken powder if you like, whatever works for you. Greens. And like I said, if you are using a lot of greens or you're using something that's going to take a while to cook up, I would suggest personally um, have a separate pot of hot water to boil the greens in, okay? Because if you boil this for too long, everything is going to taste like vegetable, okay? You don't want the sauce to be contaminated with other flavors that should not be there. And um, what you want to do, <laughs> I just threw all the greens in there at the same time, but I just noticed the stems are quite thick. And typically I would suggest that you actually throw in the stems first, wait a couple of seconds, then throw in the leaves, because the leaves cook a lot faster than the stems, okay? So what you can also do, Throw the protein in here, okay? So we're gonna do that. Okay, so let's take in the sauce again. Tapioca starch or corn starch. Just tasting the flavors, okay? <laughs> okay, so. Obviously, the more you use, the, the thicker your sauce will be, okay? Throw this in, stir it around, thicken it up, right? This time, we're going to turn off the heat, turn off the heat, remember? And after you turn off the heat, okay? Turn off the heat, crack a raw egg in it, all right? And then stir it through one direction. Okay, that's your runny egg yolk sauce. Uh, runny egg sauce, okay? So we're going to do that. So I'll take out some of the noodles. Pour it over here. Okay, so that's the eggy alternative to the sauce, all right? So it's exactly the same recipe. Once with egg, once without, okay? And the mistake most people make is that they cook the eggs okay you want it you want the heat from the sauce to cook the eggs that's how you get it runny all right does that make sense okay so when you go to a chinese restaurant you think oh this looks really hard to make it's not actually it's just glorified oyster sauce like and water and garlic all right 
with some tweaking with the flavors, whether you put fish sauce or whether you put soy sauce or whether you put some chicken powder or we put a little bit of salt, we put a little bit of sugar if you want, but primarily you want oyster sauce and garlic, okay? Um, does that make sense? How did you go? Let me know. I'd love to see your photos, okay? And if you're watching a replay, just do hashtag replay. If you want the recipe, just uh, comment, uh, say recipe please, but please do it within the video itself, not in uh, shares that are five layers deep because I may not have access to whatever it is you're watching this from. But get in touch, let me know how it turned out and please share this out so that I can get more people to tune in and have a little bit of fun on Friday afternoon my time. We get enough people to tune in that I can do more uh, I can do like play around with my schedule as well to accommodate those of you who are watching from other parts of the world. And also, like I said, don't forget bit.ly slash MSFA capitals hyphen group lowercase. That's my free Facebook group, Jackie and Street Food Kitchen. And if you're looking for something you buy for your mom for Mother's Day or for yourself for Mother's Day, um, I've got that special deal going up until this weekend where you get six months access to my paid community where you get personal coaching from me where you get a full-on malaysian cooking essentials course there will be there's nine modules there will be over 55 videos in that course albeit it will be dripped out like two videos a week and also you get me in that group i do a live weekly q a in that group answering all your malaysian singaporean cooking questions and then once a month i hop on and actually do a full-on cooking masterclass all right so you're learning from someone who's actually owned a malaysian food business in sydney australia for nearly 30 years now okay uh, thanks again guys for sticking around for watching this really appreciate your enthusiasm i love seeing the photos that you guys have been sending through i keep meaning to post them on my blog but just haven't really had time to stop to uh, for a breather um yeah great kathy recipe please and yeah thank you so much guys and i will see you next friday same time all right ciao